I know you already talked about how they played hard and no turnovers and forcing turnovers, but if you were to say one unit that impressed you the most, whether it was the offense, the defense, special teams, what would the answer be and, and why? Well, I think that's a tough question because, to be honest with you, I think we're inconsistent in all phases of the game. I don't think that, you know, there was flashes of brilliance from both, from all sides of it. Uh, but we would like to be a more consistent football team, I think, is really what the final message would be. Um, so I couldn't say that, you know, I think that at halftime we walked in and we said, listen, uh, we need to go out there and play this game with 0-0. We want to hit the field with the exact same amount of energy that we took the field with an hour and 25 minutes ago. And that was probably the challenge that I think was probably most important in the game. We went out in the third quarter and dominated the third quarter, and the game really after that point was over. And I think that uh, that challenge to the football team is the way we would like to respond more often than just the third quarter. We'd like to do it first, second, third, and fourth quarter uh, to make sure that we won football games. So I think that if you had to say one phase of the game, I would probably say throwing the football. I think that, uh, you know, I think there are a lot of questions on what we could do throwing the football with the disappearance of all those catches they had last year and the disappearance of the quarterback. And I think that for the most part, if you're watching that film right now, the opponents better defend the pass because I think he threw the ball extremely efficiently and I think we caught the ball and made some plays of the pass game. Tim, I didn't, I couldn't break it down as to what percentage they threw to Xavier's side as opposed to Asa Jackson's side. Uh, did you, could you guys, could you give a more accurate assessment of where they pick it on Xavier or, or avoiding Asa during the game one way or the other? Well, it definitely had that appearance, but I mean, I haven't heard that from them. Uh, you know, Xavier had more opportunities, to be honest with you. The touchdown catch in the end zone is great coverage. Oh, yeah. It really was great coverage. And uh, the, the pass interference, they called it, so I guess it is. I guess the best way I can answer that question right now. And uh, the other one over the middle, I mean, he's playing with zero help to the middle of the field. I mean, that's a, tough, that's a tough task. And the quarterback had more than ample time to throw the ball in that particular play, too. So he had to cover for long periods of time. So if they were, they were. I, we have a lot of confidence in Xavier. I think he's a good player. I think he's an experienced player. And I think, again, I, th you know, I think every player that plays this game, the most important thing you can do is understand your strengths and weaknesses. And, it, you know, and I think that some of the things that we have to do with everybody is make sure that they understand those things so they get in situations where they could succeed. But for the most part, if they were, if that was their answer to go after him and they probably did throw at him more than they did at Asa, uh, then I think that that's a compliment to Asa and it's an opportunity for Xavier to make plays. And I think that that's the greatest challenge you get in this game is you get those opportunities. I mean, Asa probably wants the ball thrown at him. So I'm sure X does too, and I think that's the competitive nature that most athletes have and that we look for in a corner. Based on a lot of the scores in the first couple of weeks this year between uh, FBS and FCS schools, uh, it seems like the gap is getting smaller and smaller uh, between the two levels. Um, is that something you've noticed or other coaches talk about and, uh, and what's happening? Well, I don't think there's any doubt that that's happened over the last five or six years is that, you know, people at our level on a weekly basis can compete against the people at the next level. And I think it's the people that have done it the most that understand it and understand how to prepare their team to go play that, that game are going to be the teams that have the most success. If you have to hype your team up because you're playing whoever, then you don't have a very good team. I think the teams that go and play their schedule as it comes to you will compete. Uh, they'll have confidence because they believe in themselves regardless of who they're playing and what level they are. Uh, no offense, it's just like us playing Dixie State five weeks from now. On that given day, Dixie State can beat us. Shoot, they almost beat Montana State this week. You know, so I mean, I think that those things are the way I look at things, and it might be different approaches for, uh, from different coaches, but I think the coaches that handle it as it's just another game, it's just another game. You know, I hate to say anything even about past week, and we didn't talk about, you know, my first. I talked. It's our team's first game, 2009. This is all about these guys. This is their turn. Their 2009 team's turn to play 11 times, and it happens. The University of Ohio is on our schedule, and they're the second game of the season, and we're going to play it as if. I hope we play it the same energy that we just played Sacramento State. I just hope we execute better on both on all sides of the ball.